Have you already used the Mentimeter Zoom app? This is an example of a poll that you could create in your next Zoom meeting with the Mentimeter Zoom app. Welcome to the Must Have Zoom App series. In this video, you learn how to install the Mentimeter Zoom app, how to create a free account and create your first Mentimeter presentation. This is all very easy and basic. However, there are some best practices that you should adopt when using this app with your audience, as missing some details could otherwise put you at risk of failure. So watch the video till the end for the tips that would set you up for success. By the way, if you're new to Zoom apps, check this video up here, where you will learn how to install them and how and when to use them. So why should you use Mentimeter instead of Zoom polls? Well, if you need a simple poll, just go ahead with Zoom. However, Mentimeter allows you to create much more than polls. Even with the free plan, you will be able to create engaging sessions to gather the input of your audience. We'll go into the details of Mentimeter in a second, but if there is one thing that you should retain from this video, this is the one. Always have a purpose when you ask your audience for input. You should have very clear in mind what you will do with the answers you get. Prepare for different answer scenarios and value the input from everyone in the audience. Otherwise, the audience may have the feeling that you've wasted their time, or even worse, that you've not valued their input. And believe me, that's not good if they lose their trust in you. So let's assume you've done your homework and you have a clear purpose for what you'll do with the audience input. Mentimeter is definitely a must-have Zoom app. So let's go install it and create our first presentation. Let's start by opening the Zoom desktop client and make sure you have the latest Zoom version installed. In order to have the app features enabled, you must have Zoom version 5.7.3 or later. I'm now installing the new version 5.7.4. Let's click on the app icon at the top right and let's go to the Discover tab. Here let's look for Mentimeter. Click on it and then click on Add. Review the information that you're going to share. And if you're okay with it, click on Authorize. Now the Mentimeter app has been installed in Zoom. You will also receive an email notification confirming the installation. As for most of the apps, you will need to have an existing account in order to work with them. If you don't have one already, click on Sign up and create a new one. I'll be using Mentimeter mainly for work and my goals are a mix of engagement, training and education and insights and feedback. So I'll click on not sure yet. I don't think that providing this information is going to be critical anyway. Mentimeter has four plans, free, basic, pro and enterprise. For this video, I'll be using the free account. It obviously has some limitations, but it's more than enough to help you evaluate whether you like the tool. As we access Mentimeter for the first time, we can check a video that will get you started or select a presentation template, or start from scratch. Let's close this for now. As you see, I have no presentations yet in my Mentimeter account. So let's go back to Zoom. This is where I left when I clicked on Sign up to create a new account. So let's now log in from Mentimeter Zoom app. As this card says, now you can present and vote on a Mentimeter presentation directly in Zoom. OK, the app is installed. We've done the process from the desktop client. However, it can also be installed from within a meeting. So let's start a new meeting. Click on the Apps icon at the bottom right, and in the My Apps list, you'll see Mentimeter. This is because we've just installed it. If instead you want to install it when you are in the meeting, just click on Discover and repeat the exact same steps as you've seen before. Let's open Mentimeter, which is telling me that I don't have any presentation yet. So let's click on New Presentation. A new web browser window opens. That's the Mentimeter web interface where we can build our presentation with a question. There are different types of questions that we can ask and content that we can add. To keep it simple, let's insert a multiple choice question. The question is, have you already used Mentimeter in Zoom? And let's provide three options. Yes, no, and I don't know. To each option, we can assign a picture or a GIF. So let's look for some fun GIFs. Let's remove option 4 as we don't need it. And let's make the slide nicer. Click on Themes and select, for example, the Menti Dark one. Great, we have our first presentation. Let's now return to Zoom and to the Mentimeter Zoom app. And I'll connect with a different account so I can also show you what the experience looks like from the audience side. Let's select the presentation that we've just created. 
Before launching the presentation, make sure that you'll tell the audience what you're going to do and explain them what are the options that they have to contribute to your question. The first one is to send the app to the audience. If they haven't installed it yet, they will have to do so. Once they have installed the app, they'll be able to vote in Zoom. However, there may be some people who don't have apps installed in their Zoom version and some others who may not want to install the app. They'll be able to provide their input by opening Mentimeter in their web browser. You can share the link and the access code with them in the chat or if they want to use Mentimeter on their phone, for example, they'll also be able to type the URL and code. So let's look at the first option and click on send. As in my other account, I don't have the apps installed, I'm seeing no message. So for me, nothing has happened. If I now click on share, the presentation will be shared via screen share and broadcasted to the entire audience. So if I'm a participant without the app, at this point, I may be wondering what's going on. And that's why it's important to let your audience know which are the options that they have to contribute to your question before you launch the poll. If I'm moving the window on the host side, this will have no impact on the audience screen. However, if I maximize the window on the host side, it will maximize also on the audience screen. As a participant without the app, I was able to go to menti.com and use the provided code. This is the first time I'm using Mentimeter in Zoom, so I'm clicking No. Results are updated immediately and will show on the host and audience screen. The audience can use any other browser on any other device to provide their feedback. Here I've opened menti.com on my mobile and accessed the session with the same code. And in this case, I'll say yes. And results are reflected real time in the presentation. If I try to vote a second time from the same device, Mentimeter will recognize it and tell me I cannot vote again. Great, let's summarize the key takeaways from this video. The most important one is if you're asking for your audience input, do something with it. Don't assume and be prepared for different scenarios. And if you're going to use Mentimeter, this is the workflow that I'm recommending you to follow. One, install the app before the meeting. If you don't have an account, create one. You should also create your presentation or single slide question before the meeting when possible. Two, during the meeting, open the app and select the appropriate presentation. Three, before you launch the app, let your audience know what's going to happen. Tell them that you want their input and you're going to gather it with Mentimeter. They'll have three options to access the tool. First, you send the app via Zoom to those who can and want to install it. Tell them that you will share a web link and an access code in the chat. As a backup solution, tell them that you will also share the URL and code on screen. Now click on send to send the app to the audience and paste the URL and code in the chat. Now you're ready to click on share. So everyone will see the results in real time. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing. What you can do for you right now is to watch this next video on must-have Zoom apps. See you in my next digital tip.